Hey guys, Political Junkie 2414 here, and welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're going to be going over the absolute debacle um, that's happening, that's uh, going on right now in the House of Representatives. What's well, been going on for the past four days since the 118th Congress started on, uh, you know, January 3rd, um, which was this Tuesday. Um, uh, and that something is uh, the speaker, uh, the uh, inability of the House of Representatives to, um, you know, come to, uh, you know, elect a speaker of the House. Um, you know, this is the first time in nearly 100 years, um, you know, since the 1923 uh, U.S. Speaker election in the House that a um that you know a speaker has not been chosen on the first ballot this has gone to thir this uh, election has gone to 13 ballots already the, you know it mainly due to a uh, gop op um uh, you know a uh, uh, far right opposition to a uh, house um republican leader kevin mccarthy um you know while democrats remain um a uh, well, Democrats remain uh, united around uh, the new Democratic, uh, the new House um, Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries, who has now replaced Nancy Pelosi as you know the House Democratic leader. He would be the Speaker of the House um, if Democrats had a majority or get a majority of the votes of of uh, the uh, speakership vote um but what's happening right now in the house of representatives and before i go any further i uh, hope you guys are having a great day hope you've had a great week um you know and by the way i wanted to uh, mention really quickly um that it has been two full years since uh the january 6th attack on the capitol i've already made a post about it and uh yeah i just wanted to mention that to you know make sure that you know i am doing my you know my part in making sure that uh we never forget about the uh you know that dark dark day um so now uh you know and uh, if you're enjoying the video so far go uh be sure to like and subscribe um like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and uh yeah so now we're going to get into more detail about this so you know kevin mccarthy has been having a really tough week and it's not necessarily surprising that he did not get the um votes that he needed um when he you know uh, on the first ballot what's surprising though is the rigidity um and the uh, stiff opposition that he is facing from six republicans in total and you know the the problem for mccarthy is that he you know has been kind of seen as a flip-flopper um you know he has you know denounced donald trump at one moment you know he de denounced donald trump at one moment for the january 6th insurrection um you know and then just a couple of weeks later he went over to uh he went down to mar a lago and uh took a picture with him so he's really you know kind of you know he, he's really irritated some more the moderate you know republican uh House members, and uh, he's also frustrated a lot of the MAGA uh, Republicans, the uh, Freedom Caucus, which, you know, have been pretty much uniting, you know, uh, which, you know, um, a large part of which has been uniting against him, you know, pretty much against anybody they can find their main contender right now, and, you know, from, uh, and, uh, you know, their main contender, contender from the beginning, although not all the way through, was Jim Jordan, who actually was voting for, Ke who was actually voting for Kevin McCarthy, but is seen, you know, uh, he, I think, um, he actually struck a deal with, uh, McCarthy, um, to uh you know to uh for him for mccarthy to win his vote but he is you know voting for mccarthy and uh yet these uh, six members are still abstaining from voting for the uh, house republican leader they are going to jim jordan even though he does not want it and uh, democrats remain uh, the 212 democrats in the house of representatives right now uh would be 213 if it weren't for the uh, special uh for the uh, vacancy in don mckeechan's seat in richmond um, you know, remain united around Hakeem Jeffries, something that Nancy Pelosi wasn't able to do. If you go back to the 2021 Speaker of the House, uh, uh, you know, the Speaker of the House, uh, uh, um, election, you can see here that, uh, uh, you know, she won over the vast majority of her party, but, you know, Hakeem Jeffries, who, you know, wasn't even running at that point, actually voted for Nancy Pelosi, got a vote from Connor Lamb, Jared Golden voted for Senator Tammy Duckworth, um, you know, and Kevin McCarthy got the uh, overwhelming majority of, um, or got, you know, every single Republican uh, 
congressperson to his side. So, you know, there's definitely, that definitely says something about his uh, unpopularity or his inability to, um, you know, unite the Republican base around him. And it's not so much that he's losing, you know, 50, 60 percent, um, you know, of the, he's, you know, he's outright losing, um, you know, the, uh, um, the Republican caucus. He actually has uh, almost 90, you know, he has the vast majority of them, including many Freedom Caucus members, many uh, far-right members, such as Jim Jordan. But the six, uh, you know, representatives, if we go down here, um, you know, uh, six, six of the representatives, all of which are in the Freedom Caucus, are, you know, very, very right-wing, very opposed to Kevin McCarthy. Among the names you'll see here are... Um, Lauren Boebert from Colorado, Andy Biggs from Arizona, uh, Eli Crane from Arizona, who uh, beat out Tom O'Halloran last year. He's a new guy. Um, you'll see uh, Bob Good from Virginia's 5th District. You'll see Matt Rosendale from Montana, and uh, I think there's one other person. Oh, that's right, Matt Gates, who actually voted for Donald Trump for speaker once. So, you know, this is a map that I've kind of made, or not not made. Uh, this is the Appa Mems map, but this is a little, uh, I guess... Um, map of the uh, uh, the uh, House of Representatives and the uh, seats that are filled in are the seats of the six remaining anti McCarthy vote, um, you know, anti McCarthy um, Republicans. And uh, what's ending, what's you know, been happening in the House is that you know, you need a majority to win the uh, speakership. But, you know, uh, of the entire House, you do not just need, you, you need more than just the majority of your party, which McCarthy clearly has. But what's been happening is that these, you know, six members that used to, you know, on the first ballot, it was actually 20 members, um, uh, have been voting against him and have said that, you know, d no matter what concessions McCarthy makes to try to get uh, their vote, they are not going to vote for him. There is nothing that he can do to stop them or, you know, to, to uh, persuade them. And that is really going to hurt him. So what's been going on pretty much, you know, is that the, there have been a couple of members who have voted present who have been absent. And, um, you know, the one person who's voted present was Victoria Sparks from uh, Indiana, who sided with McCarthy at first, backed out for a little bit, and now is back with McCarthy. Um, you know, and the more members that are absent or are, you know, abstaining from voting lowers the, um, you know, the bar for the, lowers the number for the majority, which meant that, you know, let's say 10 Republicans, you know, uh, vote president on the, on the next ballot, um, you know, uh, it, that would actually give, uh, Hakeem Jeffries, uh, the, uh, speakership. I actually, I don't know if that's, uh, completely correct. I guess it'd have to be, uh, 11 Republicans, because that would be a tie. Um, but, you know, if there were enough Republicans who abstained from voting or, you know, were absent, um, from, uh, the, uh, uh from the, uh, you know, 14th ballot, I guess it will be now, Hakeem Jeffries could become Speaker of the House. Now, am I trying to say that he, the Democrats are going to hold the speakership? Probably not. Um, it is probably going to be, you know, in my opinion, a bipartisan speaker. And, you know, the reason why I, you know, I, I was very kind of, you know, on the uh, train of McCarthy is going to get the speakership because, um, you know, the Republicans are simply, you know, he's the only person who has any, you know, realistic shot at, you know, getting the majority of, you know, of, uh, you know, the House to his side or, you know, of the uh, Republicans to his side. Obviously, he needs more than that. But, you know, and, and the MAGA candidates like Andy Biggs, who, you know, was, you know, who is stuck, um, you know, who has refused to uh, cross over even, you know, in the uh, uh, most recent ballots um, where you've seen a lot of the uh, previously anti-McCarthy votes um, uh, you know, pretty much, uh, shift back towards him, um, Biggs has held out strong, and, you know, he was voting, you know, he, he was, uh, the first major contender to McCarthy, and, uh, you know, he dropped out after the first ballot, but he has not voted for him yet, and, you know, when you look at this map of all of these six representatives, you don't really, I don't really see any of them really crossing over to support McCarthy, um, you know, you have, uh, uh, in in the last ballot, um, when it, what ended up happening is that um, you know unlike uh, the previous ballots before, um, Kevin McCarthy was able to uh, get about uh, fourteen members uh, who had previously um, you know who had been uh, previously opposing him to flip over um, you know with the uh, you know help uh, you know by uh, per, you know 
saying, you know, ma um, making concessions and getting them to vote for him. You know, I think that also, you know, uh, to a part of it is that the House, you know, cannot operate if they do not have a speaker. This is why none of the members have been sworn in. Um, you know, be, you know, are or are you know managing any legislation is you know because they need to elect a speaker as their first thing. The speaker who uh, swears in all of the new incoming mem incoming members. Um, you know, and so McCarthy has definitely gained ground. Uh, Hakeem Jeffries is not the one getting the most votes anymore. But you know, and you know, I think that really, you know, the chance of him becoming a speaker is, you know, a lot lower than it was, you know, just a couple of days ago. But the, uh, and, you know, Kevin McCarthy's chances have increased. He's gotten 14 Republicans to side with him, you know, but what ended up happening here is that, you know, 217 votes were needed for majority. Um, you know, there were 432 votes cast. So, you know, 432 divided by two is 216, you know, so that is the reason for this number. There were two uh, pro McCarthy uh, Republicans who were absent: uh, Ken Buck of Colorado and I um, can't remember the guy uh, Wesley Hunt from Texas, who uh, uh, I think Buck was in, uh, you know, was uh, dealing with some uh, medical issue, um, or he was undergoing some medical procedure, um, and uh, Hunt was going back to uh, see his newborn child and his wife. Um, but uh, they're both on their way back to Washington. They are both going to. Uh, most certainly vote for McCarthy, and that gets him to 216. And, you know, with those two back, um, you know, it gets, uh, it gives the total vote number, uh, you know, it brings it back to 434. Um, so that makes the uh, majority, the, um, you know, majority making vote 218. So McCarthy would need to win two of these um, six Republicans, at least, to get a majority, uh, you know, unless some of them start voting present. If some of them start voting present and, you know, just and end up, you know, saying, well, look, I can't vote for McCarthy, but we need to get this Congress on or, you know, this Congress going, you know, you, you know, we'll, we'll just let you win. In that case, McCarthy, we probably get the speakership and it wouldn't take much because, you know, as I just said, voting, you know, members voting present lowers the bar for a majority. But what's ended, you know, but I don't think that that's really going to happen. I think what's going to have to happen, I think what's going to be, you know, re realized in the next hour when the uh, House comes back, um, you know, after, you know, the, they, you know, they've decided to uh, adjourn until 10 p.m. They're actually going to, um, uh, the the you know they 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 voted to adjourn until 10 p.m. and you know they're they're gonna try to you know I I think the up the uh, hope is is that you know Buck and uh, Hunt are gonna be back um you know they're both on their way wa back to Washington so you know hopefully they are there uh, for McCarthy's sake to um you know vote for him that would get him two extra votes but you know he's still gonna have to win some of these you know he's gonna have to win at least two of these republicans let's go over you know each of them and see how likely it is that they vote um you know for mccarthy they switch over to him matt gates you know has pretty much been you know against you know the, he he's been you know a very staunch uh you know opponent of mccarthy and uh he you know even voted for you know trump as i said uh for speaker a couple of times you know he's not doing that anymore but uh, it is pretty clear that he, you know, is, you know, a pretty staunch opponent. I really don't see how he flips. Biggs is very, you know, old, you know, he's very um, anti-McCarthy. I don't see really, you know, and he, you know, he's very much a America first conservative. So I, I really don't see how he flips. Eli Crane, you know, is, you know, in the same boat. I don't see uh, McCarthy picking up his vote. Lauren Boebert, what else do I need to say? Um... And Matt Rosendale and Bob Good are really the only two people that I think have a, you know, a semi-realistic shot at voting for McCarthy. And even then, you know, they are pretty much in stiff opposition. So what's going to have to happen here, you know, in, in my opinion at least, is that McCarthy is going to have to realize that he needs to make a deal with the Democrats. He, you know, and the rest in, you know, the Republicans. There's going to probably need to be a bipartisan speaker candidate, someone like Don Bacon, maybe Brian Fitzpatrick, um, you know, there ne there's going to need to be a deal done uh, across the aisle that, um, you know, pretty much elects a, um, you know, a bipartisan candidate. And I, I really, you know, think that, um, you know, there's a chance that that doesn't happen be, uh, due to members voting present. But again, I don't really see any of these Republicans um, giving up, you know, that they really, you know, I think are 
really cemented in their opposition to McCarthy. I, I think that they're, you know, not going to stop at any means, you know, and I really don't think that, you know, they're, they're going to let up. I don't think that they, you know, are going to, you know, even if they don't have to vote for uh, McCarthy, I really don't think that they're going to, um, uh, just let them waltz by by voting present. You know, there's a chance that it happens, but as of right now, I don't think that it's too likely. And I think what's going to need to be done is for a, um, you know, on the 14th ballot, what's going to, you know, ha have to be realized by the members, um, um, you know, by the House is that McCarthy, no matter what he does, is not going to get these, you know, these six to back down, and they're probably not going to vote present. And what's going to need to happen is that either Republicans, you know, make a deal with the Democrats, you know, they, uh, you know, they, they make some sort of bipartisan deal. And, you know, they, uh, you know, the Democrats switch over and, you know, uh, you know, a couple, you know, maybe, you know, two, you know, like, a uh, dozen uh, Democrats go over and support a, you know, unity Republican candidate or, you know, a moderate Republican, or, you know, l let's say, you know, maybe, you know, Democrats make a deal for Republicans and uh, they, they switch over to Jeffries, which I think is less likely, but, you know, either of those situations would work. Um, but really, I guess the thesis of the video, you know, the, the main idea is I don't really think that McCarthy has a path. I, you know, I, I, I mean, I shouldn't say that he does have a path. But what would need to happen is that, you know, he's not going to get any, he's not going to get, um, you know, met, you know, many of these Republicans, maybe one of them, maybe two, but he needs two of them. And, you know, the two that I think are most likely, Rosendale and Good, are just as stiff in their opposition as Biggs, Crane, Boebert, and Gates. So, you know, I really don't see any of them letting up. I don't know if they're going to vote present. If they do, I'll be proven wrong. And, you know, that could be a different story. But, I do really think that Kevin McCarthy is someone who's, you know, you know, the Republican Party is going to need to realize that they are going to make a, going to have to make a deal with the Democrats to, you know, in order to get this Congress rolling, that they're going to need to, um, you know, elect a uh, bipartisan speaker, whether that's, you know, or they're going to need, you know, some bipartisanship and elect, uh, you know, a union, you know, have a unity candidate. Whether that's, you know, Hakeem Jeffries or some Republican like Don Bacon or Fitzpatrick, like I was saying earlier, I don't know. But the main idea, I guess, it, you know, the, the, the main crux of this all is I don't think McCarthy has a path. He, you know, I thought that, you know, the Republicans would cave in eventually and vote for him. And I think that that's, you know, a lot of the, you know, that's part of the case right now, you know, that that's been shown by these 14 who switched. But these six seem pretty um, you know, firm in their opposition, you know, I, you know, think that there's a chance that they switch over, you know, that a couple of them switch over, but I don't think it's very likely in the slightest bit. So thank you guys so much for watching uh, this video. I know that it was a bit of a rant, but I just wanted to make a video about this uh, whole speaker debacle uh, before it potentially gets resolved tonight if McCarthy somehow does get um, you know, the uh, votes that he needs, um, you know, at 10 p.m. tonight to become Speaker of the House or, you know, if a deal needs to be arranged for a bipartisan speaker. But either way, um, you know, this is a pretty crazy time. Uh, hopefully this all gets resolved soon, um, you know, and uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Turn on notifications so you don't miss another video, uh, another one of my videos. Um, share it with, share the video with someone who you think would enjoy it. Check out my uh, non-political channel, Interactor One Two Seven, and my second channel, or um, and my, uh, excuse me, my uh, comrades channel, Grelian Zeus Six Six Six. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things politics. See ya.